put off by how long this video is. Don't worry, I try to jam pack my videos with as much content and as much detail as I possibly can. Anything I feel I can comment on and that I feel you might be interested in, I pretty much put in the video. I try not to repeat myself and talk fairly fast. If the video is too long for you, I have recorded a shorter version and the link will be in the description box. Ant-Man 3D Movie Review The former systems engineer and cat burglar Scott Lang, who you might suspect committing cyber crime, he's not that kind of thief anymore at least. He is happy to have left his crime committing days behind him. However, he is recruited by the original now retired Ant-Man, Dr. and inventor Hank Pym, and his daughter Hope, who implore him, you have to go back, okay? They have they have a plan to steal Hank's technology, the Ant-Man technology, from his original assistant. He was, you know, he was kind of mentoring the this guy called Darren Cross, who has he's basically taken over the company with the assistance of Hope. No loss, love, love loss there. In part because Hank had, it, it was expected that he would be putting out a, you know, massive AI system, and he just didn't meet the deadline. So, anyway, yeah, the basically, you know. Pym insists that if the technology got out, the world as we know it will be over and I do not feel fine. And he is determined to keep the hero alive, even if it's not him in the suit. And he's been watching Lang for a while and made a careful decision to choose him. He's basically, we see Hank sitting in this room full of you know, computer monitors and, you know, watching things, and there is this sense that he is, he can no longer really act much in the world, you know, in part of it may be age, and, you know, so, but he's not really giving up, he's still, he's, he's watching more than acting, and, you know, having watched Lang for a while, he really feels that this is the guy. Last minute notes. The climax is great. There's a real... It, it uses everything that we've seen up to that point as far as powers go and just yeah, works with each little, you know, even even things that felt like, you know, maybe, oh, that's just a minor detail. It's pretty much everything gets put in there. And the trailers did not give too much away, neither the, not the humor and not the action. Now, at one point, a cop tases someone within just a few seconds. I found it highly unrealistic. Usually, they go straight to gun, and they don't wait several seconds. Now, we find out fairly early on that, I mentioned that Hank's daughter, Hope, who goes by Hope Van Dyne, the, the mother's last name, <laughs> yeah, they have a strained relationship. However, her taking, you know, her helping Cross take the company away from Pym was a, you know, she's basically, Cross trusts her, and they can use that as part of, you know, the, this 
you know, attempt to steal the technology back to, yeah, basically keep him from selling the technology. The every time this, uh, excuse me, ev ever since the Avengers got together in the MCU, excuse me, there's been this thing of why, you know, why not call in some of the others in, you know, the solo films? Why doesn't Iron Man call in Captain America and such? And this one does a pretty decent job of explaining why the, you know, yeah, why the Avengers are not involved. It's told fairly early on that Scott, part of what he did was he burgled Vista, which is really understandable because a lot of people are really unhappy with that version of Windows. Cross is established as a bad guy by very early we see that he is and he's using this shrinking technology and he shrinks sheep and is a real jerk about it too. You know, we, we see him to do one test and, you know, maybe the sheep doesn't make it and then, okay, do another test. See, this is why the American, the, the Amazing Spider-Man had, you know, that, that fancy program that predicted how it would go. Part of the cast here is the, basically Lang has these a couple of other guys that he, you know, he brings in for some work. And one of them is this Eastern European, there's there's one point where he sees something he doesn't understand. He's like, it's the gypsies. And it's just, yeah, yeah, he's, he's fun. It's, and then there's also this black guy also on the, the team. And he's, he's, you know, very enthusiastic guy. And yeah. And the, the movie is an hour and 45 minutes, not counting the end credits. Of course, the end credits you should stay through. And yes, there are still two scenes after them. The, the scenes involving the shrinking look amazing. I mean, if you are just like, you know, wondering if this is worth watching for shrinking, stuff yes very much so it really looks like you know suddenly just you know there's there's a yeah you see some in the trailer he shrinks in this bathtub and you know suddenly you can see every single little you know you can see if, in, before it just look you know you don't think much of it it's just a bathtub and then suddenly you can see every little imperfection and the yeah, just finer details, and it really feels like you're there. It feels like a, just a small part of the world has suddenly gotten a lot bigger, a lot closer. And the the last part of the 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 criminal team is played by Michael Pena, and I love this guy. I you know I could tell from the trailers that in this you know, he would both get to, you know, kick ass and be this charming, really upbeat goofball kind of character. I knew he could pull off both. And there's this thing of, he's the one who show up with having heard something about a job, but he doesn't skip to the part where he heard about a job. No, no. He was with his cousin who was, and they were in an art, art exhibit and it was, yeah, it was okay but it wasn't really hard. his kind of art but the the cousin that he was with has a, you know it's just these long detailed you know descriptions and even if that the the just the him going on and on like that wasn't funny enough they they show us these different people talking to each other and saying the things and 
their lips move to say what we hear him say and it's just hilarious seeing these various people you know go motor mouth as Michael Pena is just yeah he's it also you know if if this wasn't part of the MCU if I had just been like oh Michael Pena is in this movie it looks like he's fun in this movie he's not in a huge amount of the film but when he's there he really steals the show he is so much fun so yeah if if you guys you know worth watching as as a Michael Pena fan definitely now in the comics I understand I have not read the honestly I've not read an awful lot of Ant-Man in general it's yeah but I do know of him and I know he's very important to the Avengers have been since the original Avengers in the 60s so yeah anyway in the comics when Scott Lang gets into the Ant-Man situation he's basically stealing the suit in order to save his daughter and you know she I don't remember the details but she has some some illness that you know and he figures with the suit he can steal something or something you know get some money to to foot the bill or something I don't remember the exact details but that's you know the core is he steals the suit to help his daughter they actually kind of do that in this when he first encounters the suit he hasn't met Pym he you know you see him sitting and like trying to figure out how soon can I be with my daughter and like you know okay you know gotta pay rent and I, I child support and so, and so and so many days before and then you know he thinks okay well maybe if I steal something you know I can make enough money and I can pay you know like there's an early scene where he encounters his <laughs> encounters he crashes his daughter's birthday party and there's like you know he shows up and oh hi um I didn't know when the party began but it was in the invitation and then the 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 new guy shows up and he didn't get it, Daddy didn't get an invitation, but he showed up anyway. <laughs> yeah, and the you know, and and then the the daughter runs off, you know, gets the mother in there, and the mother tells him, you know, you can't just do this. You you know, we can agree on, you know, visitation. I think that's what it's called. You know, he can see his daughter, but he has to pay some child support and. So yeah, he figures, okay, if I get some money, pay the child support, then I can be with her, you know. And yeah, and then when once he, you know, at first he's like, what, what, is, what is with this suit? And then, you know, okay, he, put, he puts it on and he starts pressing buttons and then he shrinks. And <laughs> Hank kind of tells him just, just a little bit and he's, you know, yeah, that's it's some of what you see in the trailers where he he starts off in this bathtub, and then he ends up going through a couple of floors, and there's there's this party where he he ends up on the the record and you know running around trying to avoid being stomped by the dancing the dancers and yeah, it's yeah it's a lot of fun the the first time. We kind of know what's going to happen because we saw the trailers and we know the concept, but it almost takes us as much by surprise as as it does him. And it really works well that instead of explaining, you know, instead of really explaining the suit and the shrinking, yeah, it's just suddenly he's shrinking. And okay, so now he has to deal with the world suddenly being way huger and yeah it's 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 a good way to introduce the the shrinking in the the suit now the as i mentioned we have hope van dyne not janet meaning that they 
kind of skipped this really important Marvel character. There's actually, I know it's because they didn't cast her and they kind of want, there's this bit where Hank looks longingly at a photo that is apparently of her, but whoever took the photo, she was like, she, she's like wearing this, like, like they're at the beach, I think, and she's got this big hat and it's just blocking her face. And I'm just like, that's the photo you're putting up. What would, I don't even want to know what the other ones looked like if that was the best shot you got. It's just, yeah, did, I, I don't know. Did, did you, did you pay $4 for it to a kid who was warning about a storm? Anyway, yeah, the, yeah, with, with that, however, and, and apparently, you know, it is possible that they'll, you know, actually bring in Janet. It's, you know, this opens with a scene set in 89 with a younger Michael Douglas, and it's, it's, I don't know, I feel like we're almost there, but not quite there, because it still looks creepy when you see someone that is, like, not young today, and they're, they're made to look young. I mean, he, it, it looks like young Michael Douglas. I remember what Michael Douglas looked like, you know, it's, yeah, I mean, he, he looks like he stepped right out of Basic Instinct, so it's, but it's still just, I mean, yeah, yeah. And anyway, it starts in 89 and, you know, with a couple of other, you know, early Avengers members, you know, including Howard Stark. So, yeah, it, they could basically, you know, have more scenes back then to a, do a prequel, you know, throw throw a real curveball in this whole MCU thing and actually do a prequel instead of a story set roughly around the same time as the other. Yeah. But yeah, so so it's it's possible that they will put the actual wasp in there. But hope does kick ass and is you know, a nice strong female character. And it's actually, she is almost the one who goes in the suit. It's, it's a, you know, yeah, it's, it's explained why not, but I'm not going to give it away. Now, I honestly don't really know Paul Rudd from anything, but I, you know, I, I get this impression that he's kind of nobody, underdog, you know, it, I don't know, maybe his kind of loser appearance is just subtle manipulation in order to lower people's expectations and effectively maneuver any given situation or something, but yeah, it it's you know if that is what his you know it's that's what he is here and it works. He's he's really charming and you know it's it's the kind of, you you see him do stuff he really shouldn't do like breaking you know burglary and, and he he very early says I did not rob them because rob that you know that that requires threatening or using force, and I hate that, you know, so some, something like that. So he's, he's a cat burglar. He sneaks in, he doesn't mug you or anything. But yeah, you see him do these things, and you're like, oh, don't do that. It's, that's not going to get you closer to your daughter. You're not like, you know, sitting in judgment. It's, you know, you know, he is burglar. It's, we, we shouldn't really be on his side here, but we kind of are because it's just, we want to see him, you know, yeah, we want to, we want to see him get back with his daughter. It's a, yeah, get back into her life rather. 
Now, he apparently got in shape for this with a gymnast, and yeah, I mean, he, in the action scenes, he's great. He really has the, the physicality, and yeah, and, and without it feeling like he's, you know, you, you buy him as this kind of, you know, Joe Schmo, just... Yeah, you know, he's he's just he's just in good shape. Now. And the you know, in addition to the 89 stuff, we do also see a little bit of you know, stuff that he did in the 60s, as, you know, that Pym did as the original Ant-Man, and that's actually some of the, like, really insane stuff you see in the trailers is actually just that. We see, you know, there's there's this bit where he's, like, attacking, you know, military and, like, you know, yeah, it's in in this, like, it, it seems like he was kind of fighting you know, during the Cold War, he was one of these, you know, people who fought these, the, the mini wars that were going on while the U.S. and the Soviets never officially, you know, went to war against each other. So, yeah, you see this brief bit of just, you know, old-timey captured footage of, you know, some assault on a base of some, yeah, that's where some of the really cool Ant-Man stuff, it, there's not a lot of, like, really big, which is ironic, in this, the, the Ant-Man action that you see is mostly, you know, within the, yeah, the, the, the city and the, the, the company. Of that that Pym used to control, and yeah, it's they don't go to any foreign countries and take on military. Yeah. Now, now the Lang's daughter is basically just there to motivate him and be kind of cute and funny and yeah she's she's really cute and really funny the just yeah it, I, I swear I'm not okay I am I am a sucker for that kind of thing she she really is like even if you really hate the, the kind of uh, cute children Give give it a chance. You you might just enjoy at least some of her. Yeah. Now, and you know, Coristol as Cross is you know he he describes his character as this shadowy version of him, a genius scientist. But, you know, he's not ethically pure, and the, you know, the, there is this thing of he doesn't really think that he's a bad guy. He doesn't, you know, he, yeah, he basically thinks that, I'm not sure how much I can say without giving away. Yeah, but basically, just he thinks that you know the, the the he sees it as the goal to spread you know create some something scientific and then spread it to the world you know have it yeah you know have it do good and Hank he the you know he saw his invention and then he was like this cannot get out to anybody else so yeah it 
yeah, that's 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 where they disagree. Now, Judy Greer is Lang's ex-wife. I wish she was in more of it. She really doesn't have very much screen time, very many lines. <laughs> not there's not much more than what you see in the trailers, and it's is really too bad. Now there are some cameos from the MCU and yeah. Oh, I should say that. Now the the concept really allows for a lot of creative action scenes. You know, you have this suit that changes in size, although here it only makes him small in the comics, he also gets much bigger. Yeah, that would... It, the, the moment you have shrinking, that makes, you know, that opens up a whole can of ants by itself. You, you don't really want him to be able to make himself way bigger, also necessarily. That, that might really... yeah. There's a... There's only so much you can you can handle in in just one movie, maybe in the future. Anyway, yeah, it's these subatomic particles that Pym called Pym particles because he's creative like that. And yeah, they you know they let him shrink to the size of an ant roughly, and he can also use armies of different types of ants that, you know, Lang uses the, the cyber helmet to communicate with them. And, you know, some of them conduct electricity, some of them fly, you know, various stuff. And then, you know, of course, you know, there's the speed and strength increase, which is pretty typical for a superhero story. But, yeah, it actually... You know, it has all this amazing, and it it uses it. It uses it really well. The, you know, they're they're, you know, yeah. The the various ways that he'll really quickly shift from being big to small to big again, and yeah, the 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 action is really really good. And especially in the climax. Now, and we, you know, we see him be trained in the use. The <laughs> you see in the trailers that Hope socks him. Basically, <laughs> she she takes a certain amount of pleasure in beating the crap out of him. There, it's, it's not quite clear how long, but, I don't know, weeks, months, you know, they spend him learning how to use the suit and the, you know, yeah, learning how to fight, as, you know, with using the suit. And, yeah. Now. And, yeah, there, there is indeed a fight by Thomas the Tank Engine train set, and, yeah, it's, it's great. Now, and uh, with, with this, I feel much like with Guardians of the Galaxy, I am really, really glad that these out-there Marvel concepts are getting their own movies, and that these movies are embracing, not avoiding, the core concepts of what makes this, you know, really crazy. And at the same time, I'm not person. I don't have a lot of... I already mentioned that. I don't... He's not exactly my favorite hero, is, is all. And I never read much Marvel Cosmic, so... But, but yeah. It's, it's the... <sighs> You know, the, this movie, apparently Stan Lee's been trying to get it made since, like, the 80s. But then, you know, Honey, I Shrunk the Kids came out and rocked. And it was, you know, 
the, the two concepts were deemed a bit too similar. And yeah, so this got postponed and this version has been in like pre-production since 2006. You know, it is it is a concept that is really hard to make work. And you know, it really takes someone like Edgar Wright to to pull it off and and then he left. Yeah, it it took it took Edgar Wright to, to finally go too out there as, as a director for the MCU. You know, not, not Kenneth Branagh, not Shane Black, not even James Gunn, but Edgar Wright. Yeah. And I love Edgar Wright and I love the MCU. I don't think they were speaking the same language. When you look at the way that, you know... I think Evangeline Lilly, you know, really put it well. Basically, Wright's film would have been a ton of fun and just, you know, awesome, but it really would not have fit with the rest of the MCU. And yeah, the the two parties just spoke past each other with what the I I love Wright, but dude, you're the movie is gonna be part of the MCU. You can't just take it off in completely different directions and I love the MCU and dude you you hire Edgar Wright and then you let him go man anyway and and with that yeah, I don't really know I think this is the first Peyton Reed film I watch at all but I can completely understand why some people felt that Peyton Reed was a step down from an Edgar Wright but the Edgar Wright, but yeah, I still enjoy the film quite a bit. Now, and and you know, I maintain that Iron Man Two is the only MCU movie that I don't like, and the, you know, there are degrees of the various ones, and you know, considering, I mean, the last couple I've kind of rated, I maintain that. The Avengers is amazing. Captain America the Winter Soldier is as good, in some ways even better. And the um, Thor the Dark World is up there. I'm not sure it's... Uh, it's around the level of Avengers, maybe a little less. Iron Man 3 is almost... It certainly has a lot of creativity and new energy, which the second one severely lacked. And Guardians of the Galaxy, I'm slightly torn on. Also very much up there. This one, I'd say it's... It approaches the level of the Avengers, but it's just not quite. Yeah. Now... This is in part a heist film, like a classic heist film. And yeah, like, you know, very early on you get to see, you know, Lang go on a, you know, go, go and burglarize a place. And like, I shouldn't give too much away, but just, it's, it's awesome. It's a sight to behold. And basically... The rest of the film is him working with Hope and Pym and getting, you know, him being trained and them getting all the details about just how to, you know, well, they've pretty much got the plan already. He's being briefed and yeah, but yeah, it's, it's basically them planning a heist on his old, the, the building that, you know, the company that he used to own and control completely. And yeah, it's, and, and, you know, again, complete with, I shouldn't give that away, but, but yeah, if you just like, feel like watching a heist movie in the theater, and you don't care at all about like superheroics and 
superpowers and that if you can if you can be okay with the superpowers you can watch this for the heists and you will be pretty satisfied with the film you get i pretty much yeah i would i would say so now the this is this you know this was goes for some of what Iron Man One and Guardians of the Galaxy did with you know comedic kind of you know with improvised lines and fast pace quirky characters you know a lot of personality and yeah like in those two films it really works you know i i was worried that the punchlines might not hold up after we saw you know in the trailers but they do and as i already mentioned the the action is very much you know in spite of how much you see there's still a lot that it doesn't give away and like stuff that you know yeah, you'll you'll want to see this movie if the trailer gets you interested. And the the effects they excuse me, they did differently from other shrinking films, trying to give an experimental look to it with macro photography, which is apparently when you take you know, really close up photographs of something small and then you you know, use chroma keying to put someone in to the, you know, so rather than like having sets or putting the, the, you know, yeah, the, the, the sets, I suppose you could say, are actual photographs of these things. So it, yeah, it, it really, like like I said earlier, you you suddenly a small part of the world is a lot bigger, a lot closer. Now, some have called this the best MCU origin film since Iron Man. It's up there, definitely. Now, the three D really adds to the film. the The level of depth, especially in the shrinking scenes, yeah, you'll you'll definitely want to go for the three D in this one. Now, So others have noted this is this has a light comic tone. Some say it's playing a little too safe and that we've seen it before and yeah, that is basically true. It's yeah, it just isn't as out there as a lot of the you know it it doesn't really have the the energy and just yeah the the scope again ironically of you know some of the other MCU movies I've reviewed other parts of this franchise, the links are in the description box. 
please comment, thumbs up, and subscribe for more content.